Today, I will visit Tricia Klein, who is a sculptor in Woodstock. This is the center of Woodstock called Green. There are stores, art galleries, church, and restaurants around here. Tricia creates beautiful figurative sculpture that have the motif of God, Goddess, Myth, Animals. We'll see how she created those beautiful figures today. Hello. Hello, Tricia. Hi, Mimi. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me for your studio. Well, thank you for coming. When did you start creating? I started, I was, I was living in Iowa and I was working at a pizza place and I was a very small town. I was 27 and I would walk with my dog and people would say, hi, Zoe. Hi, pizza girl. And I was like, ah, I want to be pizza girl at 30. And I didn't know, I didn't really have a direction of what I wanted to do. I had taken art in high school. I had not very good teachers and I never followed it, even though I loved it in high school. So at 27, I was just, I had watched Joseph Campbell's series, The Power of Myth. And he said something that we all have heard probably to follow your bliss. And I thought, I don't know what my bliss is. I have no idea what it is. So I, I closed myself off into a little single rented room I had and I wrote little lists of things I loved and they were really silly lists. They, it was I like having a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. I, I remembered in the list this little porcelain figurine sculpture I had seen. It was in the back of an art magazine in the reviews and I loved it and so I thought I'd like to I'd like to sculpt. So I Drove, had to drive an hour to Iowa City to get a ball of clay for five dollars, and I just started sculpting really silly sculptures. But somehow, the minute I started sculpting, and it, I want to say it took me seven years before I really kind of got into direct observation doing the body. But in the beginning, I was just having fun, and I never stopped doing it. I would make the most goofy little figurines but i would sell them at craft shows so I, and uh, i just kept going and going and then eventually i started doing direct observation so i got mirror i couldn't afford a model so i got mirrors and i would just set up in front of the mirrors and i sculpted myself so that's how i taught myself how to sculpt the body So tell me about your studios. And this was a garage. And so it was converted into my studio. And I used to, I used to sleep out here with my two German shepherds. I love this studio. So sometimes when I leave at night, I thank it. But thank you. For <laughs> what do you love about your studio the most? I love, I, love having my own little space. Um, I, I love having a place to make art, but even then just, just to have my private little space, mm -hmm. it makes me sane. It makes, you know, it's wonderful. So, so you have a lot of uh, interesting objects uh, displayed in the studio. It's just like they're, they're objects that you love and so you kind of set them up to show that love, kind of for a reverence. I mean, that's what sculpting is. You're you're choosing an object that you love, and mm -hmm. you're you're kind of bringing attention to that object. So that everything you do in art extends out to life. You know, mm -hmm. it's just so that that kind of loving an object, loving a thing, is is not just in sculpture. It's like you start to pay attention and to different things, different objects. Right. So you've been teaching at the Woodstock School of Art for 24 years. And what is your teaching style? It's 
and my direction is more just kind of guiding people more towards what's in front of them mm -hmm. uh, because we tend to teach a lot of people tend to sculpt ideas about what the human body is rather than what they're actually looking at and so direct observation is I mean they're it's like they're like metaphors for life because you're, we all live in world of ideas mm -hmm. and so when you actually look and observe at reality with a very open mind, it, it's like your world kind of opens up. And that's why I think making art, sculpture, anything, it's very, it's very much like a, um, it's like a meditation technique or therapy. It's, it's for everybody. Everybody can make art. It's mm -hmm. for everybody. And it's a way to just open yourself up to this, to, to reality. So, what is your creative process? How the idea come together to your beautiful sculpture? When I, I'm, a lot of these sculptures were done in the class. Mm -hmm. And that was, I let the, the model pick their own pose, just what's natural to them, what they feel comfortable in. And it's very, it's very fun. A minute a model sits down and you've got a pile of clay to just go back and forth and look and start to kind of, you know, eat out, sculpt, shape out this pose. And then constantly going over, what have I gotten right? What have I gotten wrong? That is fun. So then when you, when I bring it home after the well, we, eight week course, then I do, I add a narrative and that, and you had asked, how do I, like what inspires me? How do I, how do I choose that? Um, that's, it's a little more difficult to describe because now when we're talking about narrative, we're talking about your personal mythology. And that is something to some, some extent you have to be aware of. A lot of people live out, they think they're living one little mythology, but they're actually living out another one. So there is an element of um, a certain amount of authenticity. But the easiest part is like that, the silly lists that I made. Mm -hmm. It's figuring out what you love. And you're spending this time, that's like these little boards that I put together, you're spending time every day going towards what makes your heart open. You've devoted your life to that. Mm -hmm. And so that, because those two questions, what do you love and what is most important to you? And so, and for me, a lot of the, the gods and goddesses do, the, the Buddhist uh, figures, the Hindu figures, uh, the also the Greek gods and goddesses. The bo whole body of work, and it was the exile. And the exile had sort of all these clothes on, and she also had an animal strapped to her back. Mm -hmm. I, most of those sold, I probably did 20 of those. And people will ask, what does that mean? Is the animal sleeping? Mm -hmm. And then my answer is always, well, what do you, what do you think? I mean, you leave it to the <laughs> viewer. Well, it, when you see an animal, it is, it takes in everything about, like, if you run into a wolf in the woods, it, it smells you, it senses you, it, it just knows everything about mm -hmm. you in a, in a ah. split second. You know? So you have a high respect to animals. Absolutely, they're unbelievable. So, why do you create? But there's there's something um, there's something when you've hit an image that is resonates within you. Ha, it, it it's authentic for you. Mm -hmm. It is a it's a physical sensation. It's it's unmissable. And so imagine once that becomes the thing that you do every day, like, why would you do it? Right. Else? Right. I mean, it's just like, it's better than, it's really just better than anything. It's mm -hmm. just amazing. And I, I, I mean, I've asked people in the past, like, if you, if you made artwork, you did, you chose to make art, but you can never show it to anybody for the, your entire mm -hmm. life. Would you still make it? And some people are like, no. Right. <laughs> and so I'm like, I don't have a choice. 
、うん、you know, I've never had a choice.、Right. Yeah. You know? 自分が何が好きで、何を一番大切に思っているのかっていう、本当にシンプルなことに気づかされたスタジオツアーになりました。